Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here playing some more Warhammer Combat Cards Ranked Mode. For this match I'm going to be playing as Servants of the Emperor who are currently just over 2500 trophies. And I have been using Canoness Viridian, mainly because of that melee mission, but I've cleared all of that out of the way. But I found that Canoness is still a really powerful warlord, and the build that I've used with her has evolved a little bit over time. I recently got access to a couple new cards, so I switched things up a little bit. In the past, I was running Celestine, who, if I go to the collection, I actually have Celestine at level 5, so she's pretty strong, but at 45 points, she's just a little bit too expensive to really be worth using. I think there are better options. So I'll just go through what I have here. We've got Aleia and Valerian, which is a cheaper option for Inspiring Presence, but able to deal more melee damage, and that's what you want with uh, Cannon S. The Penitent Engine is the obvious choice, being the most powerful melee card in the roster, and Death Blow allows you to deploy it early on without really having to worry so much about it dying, because even when it dies, it still deals a lot of damage. We've also got the Eversore Assassin, just an all-around really good Berserker. And then we've got two legendaries, Iron Hand Strachan. Uh, this guy only has one melee upgrade at level 2, but he has a lot of health and regeneration, so he's, he's just a pretty solid card. And then Colonel Curtis Hicks, this guy is pretty fun. Uh, he does not have very much health for his cost, but he is the potential to deal a massive amount of damage with the big game hunter if you deploy him in the right situations. And then we just got some cheaper units in here. Uh, the Death Cult Assassin has Berserk. This thing can potentially deal some melee damage, but it, it's not really going to survive too long in most situations. And then we got Axemillion, our loyal dog friend who has Scout. And then finally, the Crusader is also a really great card to use with Cannon S with the Taunt. It can protect some of your stronger units, and it will, in most cases, die first enabling your stronger units to get the extra attack in. So let's go ahead and deploy and see what we're up against. Hopefully it's not Dark Strider again. I've been facing him quite often, actually, in ranked mode this season. But the AI, of course, has no idea how to use the special rule. Okay, we're up against Greyfax, another powerful warlord. We'll see what they're running. They have quite a few bodyguards. And first of all, let's check to see how much of a boost they're getting. 48%, so that's actually pretty pretty significant. I'm going to drop down the Penitent Engine. They do have the initiative, so they'll be taking the first turn here. And they are running a mix of units, but they got Psychers, looks like. And they will be debuffing my melee, actually. Okay. Well, let's put down the dog. See what the third bodyguard is that they deploy in this opening round. Okay, shields. That could take a little while to, to get through. Okay. And 50 damage. Hmm. That's going to be a little tricky, actually, because are they going to go for the psychic attack? This guy can deal 38 damage. It's not too much. I think we'll just go like this. Not really the ideal start, but hopefully it works out. Just going to try to break through those shields there. The melee debuff cancels out the, the buff I got from the dog. Alright. And their ranged units have no melee attack, so they are not countering with anything except their Psyker. Our dog survives with one health, and now they're going for the ranged attack, so the dog is going to survive another round. Again, not... Uh, very great turn for me. Okay, so... We'll be able to deal with the last shield on there. Take down their one ranged unit. And then... Now... The dog is going to die. Triggering the extra attack on the Penta Engine. That is what you like to see. 60 damage there. Deals 75% of the damage and wow they're deploying the sisters of battle okay more shields to deal with that's always fun servants of the emperor have plenty of shields i'm not actually running any shields 
uh, in this deck. Except for Canoness Radiant herself. They're going with another ranged attack. Alright, so that's a fair bit of damage, but at least the Eversor Assassin has a ranged attack so it can take out one of those shields. And I think this uh, Battle Sister, she got her stats increased recently. I don't think she was a very popular option, but she is pretty good, pretty cost effective at least at this point. And now, again, the Death Cult Assassin is going to die, triggering the extra attack here. Let's see. This time it's the Eversword Assassin that gets that attack. And their next bodyguard is the Seven Point Commissar with Inspiring Presence. Are they going to go for the Psychic attack? I'm not really sure here. Only deploying one Psyker at a time. It's like a toss up between Psychic or Ranged. I guess we'll just put down Iron, Iron Hand over on the right side and they are going for the psychic attack so they're charging up a pretty good ranged attack now 82 damage from that psyker and this guy is i don't why is this guy still alive actually five point card there all right let's take that guy down Okay, the Eversor Assassin is taking a little bit more damage than I would like. It's, it does not look like it's going to be surviving much longer if they go for a ranged attack here. And, oh, they are targeting Iron Hand Strachan instead, which is fine by me because actually he's dealing the least damage out of anything on the field, so... A bit unfortunate that he wasn't able to get much out of the regeneration. But solid attack there. Alright, two more bodyguards to deal with. And, okay, we want to move that Penitent Engine out of the way there. There's the Crusader. Let's put him down. See how much damage this Precision Shot does. It's another very cheap but pretty efficient card that you can use with Grayfax. The Rogue Trader, 59 damage. Alright, let's go for another melee attack take down some more of these guys they haven't really deployed anything big though yet so what's what's the last bodyguard gonna be penta engine's gonna well another target acquired there this time they're targeting the eversor assassin so he's gonna be dying big sniper shot from that okay but the penta engine Gets the extra attack, destroying the other sniper before he gets a chance to attack. So that that worked out pretty nicely. And now Grayfax will be deploying to the field. Now I only have two bodyguards left. And Grayfax herself is quite strong. But the Penitent Engine is going to be key here. Going to inspire it up so it can deal extra damage. We're going to go for the melee attack. And then the Death Blow will trigger when the Penitent Engine dies allowing us to deal even more damage to Grayfax in a single turn. So, let's see how much we can do here. 96 damage. Yeah, the Inspiring Presence combo is pretty good here. Okay, we'll also be able to get an extra attack in, of course, from the special rule. So, 100 damage, and then, boom! One turn KO. Taking down the enemy warlord with a combo of melee attacks. So in the past with Canoness Viridian, I I always tried to put down like two strong melee units and then one weaker one, and just try to ensure that the weaker one dies so that the stronger ones are able to get the extra attacks. And that's generally what I try to do here. But since I, I actually have like a higher ratio of stronger units, so sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes I'll have like three strong units on the field, which is a little bit different than how uh, this deck used to play out. But it's been working pretty well. And yeah, unfortunately, some a lot of the strongest melee cards uh, with Canoness Viridian don't actually unlock until quite late. So for... You know, lower ranking players, beginners, I think it might be difficult to actually make a good deck with Canonist Viridian. 
Uh, like I think Iron Hands Dragon unlocks at maybe level 60-ish or something, maybe even 70. Penta Engine as well. Uh, this guy actually unlocks pretty early, I think. They've changed around, I think, the levels at which some of these guys unlock. And Curtis Hicks and also Iron Hands Dragon were uh, limited edition cards for a good bit, but they were j recently added to the general pool. So now uh, you can get them in just regular packs as long as you're high enough level. Anyway, this is the deck that I've been using with Canness Viridian, and it's been working out pretty well. So let me know if there's a build that you've used with her that worked out well for you. Uh, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.